Okay, we are live with Alexander Mercurius in London. How are you doing, Alexander? I'm very well. I'm very delighted to be on this program today. Uh, it's going to be a great program. I, I, I know. Yes, it, yes, it will, because we have some very special guests from Texas, I believe. We have the one and only Mike Adams and Michael Yan. How are you gentlemen doing today? Doing great. Great to be on your show, both of you. Very well, it's sir. It's an honor. Yeah, we're having a great, great time here with you. It's great to have you guys on, and we have a lot to discuss. Let me say a quick hello to everybody that is watching us on the Duran.locals.com, Odyssey, Rockfin, Rumble, YouTube, and a quick hello to our moderators, our fantastic moderators, the best in the business. Uh, Mike and Michael, I have your information in the description box down below, and I will also add your information as a pinned comment, but very quickly, where can people follow you to find gentlemen? Well, uh, first of all, this is our Brighton.com studios, and I'm, I'm about to interview Michael separately after this show. He came early to be with you, which is so amazing. This is going to be so much fun. But uh, Brighton.com and naturalnews.com for me. And then Michael, you want to give out your uh, locals? or uh, I'm on Substack at Substack. Michael, Michael Yon and also on X Daily. Uh, and then mostly I just spend my time in the jungles and, uh, and do a few interviews. All right. Fantastic. So Alexander, uh, Texas, the Southern border, and we have some news with, uh, with Ukraine and the funding for Ukraine and Israel and Taiwan, but without the Southern border. So we have a lot of, uh, ground to cover, uh, over to you, Alexander. Yeah, absolutely. And it is, it's an absolute, it's. It, it may interest people in, in Texas, but your state is now the most famous state in the union because <laughs> all the world is talking about what's going on in Texas. Um, it's seen as absolutely crucial to what is happening in the United States. And of course, what the United States, what happens in the United States affects the whole world. I mean, it is still that way. People talk about America and losing its way, but the United States remains pivotally important and Texas is at the moment the most pivotal state in the union. What is happening on the border? What is going on there now? Is it, I mean, I've been hearing dramatic things. I've been hearing extraordinary things about what has been happening on the border, about uh, uh, numbers of people who've been trying to cross the border, about the attempts by the Texan government, the, the, the state government of Texas to try to control this thing. What has the Biden administration achieved in the time it has been in office or not achieved? What what has what is the actual state on the border of Texas? Well, if you can just explain that to our me, viewership, which is global, I should say. I mean, you know, people from all over the world, not just the United States. Let me give a little preamble and then I'll turn it over to Michael, because Michael Yan, I think, is the expert who has done more on the ground first person investigation of what are called the invasion camps in Panama, such as San Vicente and I think Lajas Blancas is another one of them as well, that are funded through the State Department and through Homeland Security, through Alejandro Mayorkas, is actually funding these camps as staging areas to invade the United States. But let me just say up front first, I have a, a lot of strong ties with uh, former Texas Rangers and law enforcement in Texas, and they tell me privately that they are not going to allow Biden to continue to use Texas for an invasion uh, beachhead into the United States. We now have, what, 25 additional U.S. states that, that are backing Governor Abbott's uh, letter to uh, Joe Biden, which said that the federal government has shattered the compact with the states, which means that Governor Abbott is able to invoke a particular section of the United States Constitution that allows the state to defend itself when the federal government has abandoned its duty to protect the states. So we are now seeing, as a preamble to this, we are seeing the opening stages of a breakup or what could be a potential breakup of the United States of America. It could very soon become half and half, or, you know, roughly half the states might break away. But 
Uh, but let me turn over to Michael for the, the details of what's actually happening in Panama and the Darien Gap and the, the flood that's coming to this country. All right. Uh, well, I'm sure a lot of viewers here have no idea who I am. I'm a war correspondent. I spent a lot of time in wars around the world. And, uh, and now I'm looking at the weaponized migration. And I've done this all over the world from Japan to Greece to Morocco to Lithuania before that war broke out, warning that something may happen there in that region. Um, I'm always watching the various inputs. So I'm watching energy, trade routes, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, I was actually warning about uh, Nord Stream before it was before it, before something happened to it. And in fact, I was over in Germany at BASF twice that year before something happened to Nord Stream, uh, warning about it. And so, bottom line is, I watch this a lot more than just the weaponized migration. That's just one of the aspects. It's obviously a kill shot. This is demographic warfare. You can see what's happened to Europe, where I spent more than six years, by the way. Uh, but so now I, I spent, when Biden was installed, I was at the inauguration, or at least I was in Washington. I was not invited to the inauguration. But then I flew straight to El Paso, Texas. Uh, and so I was there within 24 hours thinking that, th you know, they're going to start to surge across the border. And they did, right? And then from there, I flew to Colombia because I thought Colombia would end up, uh, the Darien Gap corridor would probably start to really widen. Now, the Darien Gap, there's a highway called the Pan-American Highway that goes from Alaska, Prudhoe Bay, all the way down to uh, the tip of South America. But there's one area about 60 miles uh, that has no road. That's called the Gap, the Darien Gap, because it's called, anyway, nobody knows where the Darien name came from, but it goes back centuries. But they call it the Darien Gap. So that's the jungle between Panama and, and, uh, and Colombia. So I flew to Colombia watching... Immediately, they started surging through Colombia into the Darien Gap. Then I flew over to the Panama side, and I've, now I've spent about six months in the Darien Gap since uh, Biden was installed. And now what I've been watching through the Darien Gap is it's the, the flows are dramatically increasing. For instance, in just in the parking lot before we just came on, I was getting the latest intel up, uh, uh, update from Darien. I mean, the flows are dramatically increasing. Chinese, for instance— uh, in huge amounts of, uh, uh, of uh, Afghans and, and whatnot. In fact, I'm, I just took Dr. Brett Weinstein and, and Chris Martinson and uh, Ann Vandersteel and Masako Ganaha down there on the last trip, and, uh, and, and uh, Dr. Weinstein came back and went on the Tucker Carlson show, and it, I think it's had about 12 million views so far. <laughs> so that's worth watching because uh, Brett Weinstein's interview with Tucker Carlson was very accurate. In fact, I'll be going on Tucker in about two weeks uh, but I'm going back to Darien soon. But what I'm getting to is when you're looking at the Texas flows, Eagle Pass and all that, I've, I've, been, I've been across the entire U.S. southern border from SpaceX, which is on the Gulf side, to San Diego, which is a, I've been on the Mexican side. It, I'm very familiar with this border, right? And, and what I'm getting to is no matter what happens in Texas or at Eagle Pass, Eagle Pass is like a speck of pepper on the size of this table. It's really nothing. But I assure you that the flows are increasing through South America. If you can get your feet in South America, you can get anywhere in the United States within a week or two, right? And so now we have flights coming every day from Turkey, like from Africa to Turkey to Bogota. And then Bogota, many of those flights go straight to the United States. Uh, others go to uh, Guatemala, then to the United States or Mexico. Bottom line is the flows continue to increase. The United States is being straight up invaded. I could go for hours, but I should... Cut it at that. I've heard that the figures, the six million people entered the United States illegally since the Biden administration, President Biden was inaugurated. Is this is this figure, you know, in ballpark correct? Because it seems staggering. I mean, it is beyond beyond understanding. It is far worse than anything I've ever heard. I mean, we had a migration crisis in Europe in um 2015, and that was 1 million people connected with the conflict in Syria, and that sparked a huge political crisis in Europe, including in Germany. But that was 1 million people in a continent of many more people than the United States has. Is it, is it 6 million? Is it as much as that? Well, Michael, wouldn't you say right now it's anywhere from 3,000 to 10,000 a day? Well, actually, just through the Darien Gap, it's probably three to 5,000 a day now. Uh -huh, just uh, through the gap, right? Yeah, that's just through the gap. That doesn't include uh, 
a lot of the people joined flows in Guatemala. I was just over in Guatemala looking at it. We have the United States is working on eight camps in Guatemala. Actually, camp is, a, is an aggressive term. They're more like bus stops. Uh, and, uh, and a lot of the people fly directly to Mexico or they come in on swift air flights 24 hours a day. And then we've got this giant border between uh, Canada and uh, the United States, which is nobody seems to know about these. I mean, how big those flows are. We don't know how many are coming in. Is 6 million directionally accurate? I would say it's probably highly conservative. For instance, in Darien Gap, 82,000 came through in one, just one single month last year in August. That was the peak month. Uh, but this month, I'm, I'm imagining there'll probably be more. I can tell you more in about uh, six or seven days. I, I would say half a million a quarter is, is a pretty good ballpark of, of what would like a couple million a year. It, it's hard to say because, you know, we both have a lot of Border Patrol contacts. I'm yeah. on the border a lot. Nobody seems to know. And, of course, our government is covering it up. Uh, but what we can see is on the streets in the United States is we see people everywhere. I mean, the bathtub's getting full. You know, when I was in Hong Kong, I, I got kicked out in 2020 you know, uh, because I was there watching a similar thing. You know, the, the, one of the ways that mainland China slowly took Hong Kong was just by doing the weaponized migration. They just brought in Mandarin-speaking mainland Chinese uh, day by day for years and, and took over, you know, uh, teaching positions, took over uh, police and political positions, the normal, right? And the same in Tibet. When I was in Tibet, it was the same. I mean, there were some war aspects, obviously, but mostly it's just demographic warfare. I, recently, I had dinner with a retired general in Honduras, and he's of Chinese descent, actually. And, I, and we talked about this for several hours. And he, said, uh, and he said, you know, China is not coming. He's been to China seven times. They invited him because he's of Chinese descent. But he was a retired Honduran general. He said, China is not coming to attack everybody militarily. They're, they're coming to become you, like they did in Hong Kong. They became Hong Kong, right? And, and as you see in Taiwan, you're very familiar with, I may go back there again soon. But you see this co-sanguination between, you know, whether it's uh, business or, or, or anyway, I, again, I should cut it <laughs> off. I could go for hours. Yeah. I mean, the other thing that we don't understand, this is something that people in Europe, for example, do not understand, is that this is a global migration. This is a global migration into the United States. It is not just people from uh, Latin and South America who are going into the United States. It's people from China. It's people from Afghanistan. You've mentioned all of this. And it's highly organized and it is partly funded by the United States government, the United mostly. States government, mostly funded by the United States government. Now, we've just had a bill in the Senate, which was a, supposed to try to control this process. And there was an incredibly complicated negotiation about it. But there was one thing about it that stood out, if I've got this correct. And perhaps you can explain to me whether or not it is correct. And that is that the bill allowed for 5,000 illegal migrants to enter into the United States each day. And this is supposed to be a compromise? <laughs> and, right. uh, and what, what government actually passes a bill saying 5,000 illegal migrants are allowed to enter the country a day, Can or I, well, indeed one illegal migrant. I mean, if 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 they're they're coming in illegally, why are you allowing them in? I mean, how, how can you pass a law or agree a agree a system to allow any illegal migrants to enter at all? I mean, surely this is a logical contradiction. Can you uh, explain this to me? Let, let me mention one tweet, and I'll, I'll turn over to you, Michael. Uh, I think it was Scott Adams that that tweeted out. He said, it, it feels like we are in a war and that our government is not on our side. I think that's the sentiment that is infuriating the American people. They are now realizing that they are being replaced. They're, they're being inundated. There's an invasion, as Michael said, the invasion is accelerating and our own government is opposed to organize migration, you know, organize immigration, which none of, none of us oppose immigration per se, 
we, we want it to be organized. We want it to be based on merit. We want to be able to do background checks on people, know where they're coming from, and demand, hey, you bring some money with you so that you don't have to end up being a burden on the whole system. But, Michael, what, what would you add to that? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is a lot. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's go. Uh, the main funder is the United States. We're the one funding our own in invasion. So I see people talking constantly about how we should punish Mexico or or Panama or Colombia or whatever. It is the United States bottom line period, right? For instance, um, there is a place in Panama where I'll be at again in a few days called the City of Knowledge. The City of Knowledge is the old U.S. Army South headquarters, Fort Clayton, right? Now that is at least 62 NGOs, uh, IGOs, and nonprofits, including IOM. So they've taken over our headquarters. The IOM flag flies where the old U.S. military, old U.S. Uh, American flag oh, is. Is that flag. IOM? The IOM is the, yeah. the the International Organization for Migration. You'll see their tote bags in airports all the time. They're either blue and white or white and blue. It'll say IOM or OIM, depending on the language. So that's part of the UN. They're a multi-billion dollar racket uh, run by a lady named Amy Pope. She's now the director. She's American. She was installed maybe almost five months ago now. And she brags that the United States is the biggest funder of IOM. Now, there's many others, such as Catholic Charities and, and so many other. One of them that I've been hitting on for the last two weeks is Hyas. And actually, I've mentioned it for years, but, but I really started hitting on it recently because Hyas, the Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society, uh, actually, Secretary of Homeland Security Mayorkas, Alex Mayorkas, used to be a board member on Hyas. That's important. So... He was a board, he's a, he's a Cuban refugee himself of Jewish parents, and Hyas is obviously a Jewish organization. So it's interesting because Hyas.org thanks, or let's say congratulates uh, Mayorkas for, you know, taking over at Department of Homeland Security. Now, on April 18th of 2022, he flew down to Darien, Panama, and four Blackhawks. I was there. I was waiting for him. In fact, he landed right in front of me, and he went into the camp called San Vicente Camp. That camp is about 40 yards away from the highest headquarters in Darien. That, I'm familiar with that headquarters because I almost rented it myself, and then Highest got it out from under my feet. I, was, I wanted to rent it because it's right next to that camp. But so, so Secretary Mayorkas came down there and expanded that camp. This is the camp that the Chinese mostly use as they're using— uh, the, the, the Camp is actually, again, it's an aggressive word. It's more of a bus station now. So the Chinese, as they emerge, and the Syrians and the— and so many others, as they emerge from the Darien Gap, they come in there, they get on a shower, and they go to buses up on Highway 1 to the United States. Now, in October, there were only about 60 buses per day running. Now they've upped it to about 200. So that's when I say that they're, you know, the, 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 you know, the, 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 the flows are increasing. I'm saying that based on things like you know, more than tripling the number of buses, uh, increasing the numbers and sizes of the camps, and also the camps are much more efficient. So whatever is happening in Texas, I can tell you the upstream is definitely increasing. But, but the, the bottom line is the American people realize increasingly that our own government is funding and organizing the invasion of the United States of America. And we are both hearing the word treason being used a lot more in the analysis and commentary of this. I mean, uh, just like you said, Alexander, what other nation in the world would fund its own invasion and takeover? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, can I just quickly say, I mean, f funding illegal immigration into its own country. Yes. It seems most odd. I mean, it, it's, it, I say odd is not, I mean, that's an understatement. I mean, I just can't think of a word that would describe how absolutely bizarre this is. It is the yeah. government of the United States undermining its own immigration laws. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And, and, it, and it's not like they are bringing the world's best. No, they're emptying the prisons in, in El Salvador, for example, or in Venezuela and sending us like MS-13 gang members by the busload. And I interviewed one of the security personnel that, that is on these buses. You know how Governor Abbott of Texas is actually sending some of these migrants to other cities to kind of share the burden and demonstrate what a problem this is. Well, I interviewed one of the security guards who was on those buses, and he speaks Spanish, and he was able to overhear the plans of a lot of these people. And they go to the blue cities 
to join the criminal networks there, to carry out crimes, drug trafficking, weapons trafficking, human trafficking, and also to do looting and, and theft and carjackings. And then when they get the money there, they will often go to red states to spend that money and not commit crimes because the red states will prosecute them or shoot them. So literally, they know that the blue sanctuary cities in particular are a free for all. I mean, did you, I, I know you saw this, but they, they beat New York police department officers half to death the other day. And those illegals were just let out of jail with no bail. It's infuriating to the NYPD. How is this all justified? What, what explanation does the United States government give for this? I mean, they must presumably give some explanation for what they're doing. I mean, they must give some reason for what they're doing. No, they say the border is secure. I mean, that's, that's Mallorca's. It's all, it's all covered. It's all fine. What about Kamala Harris? Isn't she the border czar? I mean, this is what we've been hearing in Europe. <laughs> What's become of her? Is she doing anything? Does she know where the border is? Yeah, I'm not. Does she know where the United States is? Yeah, I'm not sure if she would actually yeah. know on a map where the United um, States is. I mean, obviously, these are an information. I've written three books on information war, by the way. Unfortunately, it's about about specifically about Chinese information war. Unfortunately, they're all only in Japanese language because I've been trying to wake up Japan for years. Uh, but what I'm getting to is is information war is the that's the highest form of warfare, obviously, all the kinetics and Navy SEAL movies, and that's that's almost child's level compared to information war, right? Uh, and what I'm getting to is Biden is what's called a dog king. It's an old term that was used, you know, when there was wars between kings and, you know, uh, Norwegian and Swedish, you run off or kill another king and you make an actual dog into a king, right? You give him a crown and, and a throne and a translator and, mm -hmm. and then, you know, you tell the people that's your king. And they're like, well, that's a dog. And they're like, well, it's your king, right? So it demoralizes the people, and it also emboldens your enemies, right? And that's what Biden is. That's what Trudeau is. These are dog kings. Zelensky, he's a dog king, right? And so it, this is obviously in service to something much larger. A lot of this is about trade routes and energy and, and food, you know, like the, the Id very idiotic Ukraine war. Uh, it's not idiotic if you want to actually cause mass famines eventually. It's actually quite smart if you want to do that. Uh, a lot of the things that are going on right now actually are— of on a, they're part of a much larger global plan. For instance, the genocide unfolding now in Gaza. This is all much. This is all part of a much larger plan. As is the invasion of the United States by the United States, Europe as well. Right. So this is. We see that the administration is busy undermining the laws of the United States by um, arranging this mass of illegal immigration. What is Texas doing? What is Texas trying to do? And Texas is only one state, but um, let's specifically talk about Texas. What is this thing that Texas is trying to do, which the administration in Washington is so unhappy about? Well, in, in my opinion, Alexander, Texas is laying the legal groundwork for the possibility of secession. I'm not saying it's going to go there, but if it does, Governor Abbott has already cited sections of the Constitution, such as Article 4, Section 4, that specifically require the federal government to protect the states from invasion. So he and, of course, the AG of Texas, Ken Paxton, who is an extraordinary man, they tried to get rid of him with an impeachment uh, half a year ago or so, but he survived that. And I think he would make a great AG in the Trump administration, by the way, I'm just saying. But Abbott and Paxton are laying the groundwork for the, the legal justification to do what they need to do, because We've even seen, by the way, the Border Patrol Union and Border Patrol as a federal agency, but the union saying our members will not put back up the barbed wire, or I'm sorry, will not take down the barbed wire uh, and let illegal immigrants come through, that we also will defend our borders. So what's pivotal right now that has never happened in American history that I'm aware of is the fact that we now have one state telling the federal government we will not abide by your unconstitutional Supreme Court decision and your unconstitutional policies, we will protect our border. And then to have 25 other states stand with Texas, that has never happened before. In years past, everybody would have folded by now. But something has changed. And it's that the American people are fed up. They, they, they see the, the depth of the invasion that's happening. And they are demanding that their lawmakers and their governors, and in some cases, their mayors of their cities, 
do something to protect our borders. And even Democrats are getting on board with this because the problem is so bad in New York City and Denver, Chicago and other Democrat run cities. Mm. Can, can you speak a bit about what the internal effect of all this massive immigration is in the United States? I mean, you mentioned the uh, violent crime, the fact that the blue state, blue cities are becoming sanctuary cities for, for, for criminals. But can, can you give some descriptions of what it's of what it's been doing to Texas itself? And can I just make one point? Because, of course, Texas is one state in the union so it can protect its border its external border but it can't control its internal borders so if people presumably are able to enter the united states in other places and That's you right. mentioned canada for example they can still go to texas because there's no internal restrictions that i'm aware of within the united states you can travel from one part of the united states to another and it's not difficult That's right. am i right in this you're correct you're correct uh, Michael, I don't know what you would say, but I, I mean, crime is probably just the biggest factor that's hitting everybody crime uh, eventually, through the roof. I mean, eventually it's clear we'll go into civil war. Uh, uh, that's why I returned to the United States in, in 2020, because I could sense war is what I do. I mean, uh, you know, I, and I had been overseas most of my life, actually. I'm, I'm American, born and raised in America, but I've spent most of my life downrange in about 100 other countries, right? So when, when I saw how things were unfolding uh, after I got kicked out of Hong Kong— uh, you know, I went to Thailand and, and watched this COVID thing unfold. And then re and I could sense the United States is going into civil war. That's why I returned. And I specifically said, I think it was August 2020, I returned to the United States. And, and you came to Texas. I came to Texas. <laughs> and I went straight to Portland first right, because I went to, uh, to out with the Antifa clowns just to get a, a sense of who they are and that sort of thing. And then I came to Texas. And, you know, and, and a lot of people were like, wow, you're going to Texas. It must be safe. And I'm like, uh, people who've known me for many years know that if I show up to your door, that's like death knocking on your door. You know, if I'm, I mean, seriously, when I went to Ukraine, or not Ukraine, when I went to Lithuania and whatnot, I went there because I love Texas. I mean, I'm, I mean, this is my people, really. I mean, I'm from Florida, but we're the, I'm Scott Irish, man. You know, it's like, and, um, and so this is my kind of people. It's like redneckistan, you might say, right? And so, and so, um, and uh, and uh, but but the bottom line is is uh, we are clearly going into civil war. Uh, you know, it's it's um, and Texas can assert control over its own state borders. By the way, in a civil war scenario, and it is prepared to do that. It's not that difficult to lock down the interstates. By the way, it's not that difficult to control the flow of goods uh, in and out of a state. Texas has very dedicated law enforcement, highway patrol, you know, state guard. And also Texas has the most veterans and former law enforcement of any state in the union. Texas has the highest gun ownership. I mean, this is America. I mean, we own more guns per capita than any country in the world. And Texas owns more guns per capita than any state in the union. There's no lack of firearms and ammunition in Texas. How, yeah, how I, so can I say one thing? Yeah, I, 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 I think... I, I don't want to see Texas split off. I don't want to see California split off. I think we're falling straight into their trap. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't uh, want to and, see a secession and, either. And, and Governor Abbott of Texas, he is clearly World Economic Forum, full stop. That's the uniform he wears. He is not on our team. Uh, whatever he does is not in our, to our benefit. You know, busing people deeper into the blue states, you know, to show them, you know, which made a lot of my conservative friends very happy. I'm like, that's a mistake. He's injecting them deeper into our bloodstream while he clears the banks of the Rio Grande to bring more in. Uh, well, Abbott and many I, of the I, other governors. I kind of like the fact that he's sending them to other cities temporarily. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm like, hey, I, share the pain a little bit. Show these yeah. people. I mean, there's you're a gonna side. Be a border state I too. like that on you one know? emotional level. Yes. But as somebody that doesn't want the United States to be, there's a reason why I go to San Francisco so often. Because I think that eventually is where CCP would like to make uh, a, a sort of a headquarter city in the United States. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. and, and look what happened. Uh, she came over and he landed in San Francisco, didn't even bother with uh, with um, going to Washington. I mean, it's very clear. Some of this is not that uh, complicated if you just watch it seven days a week like Rain Man, like I do year after year, you know? Yeah. You're going to have huge numbers. You already have huge numbers, millions of illegal people moving floating around the united states that is not a sustainable situation are there any plans to make them legal in other words to give them u.s citizenship well yeah i mean is, they, what... that's what they're doing i mean we already have them joining the military joining police forces 
we already we have people with top secret clearances uh, in in NSA and FBI and whatnot that can barely speak English. I mean, it's just over the we are we literally have cancer uh, as a nation at this point. We have cancer, and we are clearly going into civil war. It's about, well, you know, amateurs always talk about sparks, as you know, right? Yeah. But it's about conditions. And right now, I call it the beast. The beast is actually an amalgam of different uh, players. World Economic Forum is actually an amalgam. But as a, as a catch-all, they have obviously uh, uh, cooperate quite closely with the Chinese Communist Party. But Go ahead, sir. Well, I, I just want to add that, yeah, the Democrats want to give the illegals a pathway to citizenship because they think that will benefit them politically with, with the votes. Uh, Trump, his plan, as has been explained to me by law enforcement in Texas, is to deport millions of illegals. And in order to find them, they will do traffic enforcement. So they're not going to go door to door kicking in doors. It's not going to be a big civil rights you know, violation. But if you're stopped in a traffic violation, because, by the way, illegals drive like insane people the, because if, if an illegal is driving a vehicle in Texas and smashes into you, nothing happens to them. They have no driver's license, no insurance. And the, the police will say, there's nothing we can do because the courts can't handle it. You know, good luck. That's it. Your insurance is going to have to cover it. So they drive like insane maniacs. Okay. It's going to be a simple matter for law enforcement to just start pulling over every person driving like that and run, run their name. If they're an illegal, turn them over to the Trump administration's border patrol and then boot them out of the country. That's the plan. So Trump, the Trump administration can effectively remove millions of illegals from this country. But then again, an election has to happen and that election has to be fair. So, yeah. What are the well, odds? We talk, talking about elections, I mean, anybody who knows American history, as I once uh, you know, was educated in it, knows that the Democratic Party has a history. It, it was extremely successful in the past in, in, in organizing immigration, uh, the, you know, voting blocks out of immigrants who came from Europe. I mean, this is something they were doing in the late 19th, early 20th century. They did it very well. Is this the plan again that, you know, you, the Democratic Party trying to get create electoral blocks out of these people? from these people. Well, coming absolutely. Yeah. The, my understanding was the plan was they were going to try to ram through Congress this year amnesty for tens of millions of illegals and give them voting rights. That plan is dead now, I think, because of this border bill fiasco that just failed. Mm -hmm. But there's buzz that Joe Biden may try to do that via executive order before mm -hmm. Election Day. I think that would fail. I think it would be overturned by the Supreme Court very quickly. But they may try that out of desperation. Nevertheless, what Michael said about demographic warfare is true. In the long run, if you don't stop the illegal open border, you end up getting overrun just demographically. And I, and I do want to say, by the way, I'm married to an immigrant, okay, from, from Taiwan. And many of my friends and coworkers here in Texas are Hispanics, uh, Latino Americans. And they agree with me on these points. Understand that black Americans, Latino Americans, Asian Americans all want a secure border. This is not a white thing or a redneck thing. This is an American thing. Everybody in America now wants to control the border. They're not anti-immigration, but they want a controlled system that starts with zero illegals. Let's, let's start there and then decide who we want to let in and why. Which is, I mean, immigration control has been something that the United States has practiced for much of its history. I mean, uh, it was very strict to my knowledge until quite recently. I mean, clearly something has radically changed and it, it clearly is connected with the, with the political situation. Can I just ask, uh, going back to the question of the states that you mentioned, the 25 states that are supporting Texas, does that include the other border states on the southern border? Well, it doesn't include Arizona because of what happened with the rigged election there. Yeah, I was there for that election. <laughs> yeah. was, in the two polling stations I went to, the machines didn't work. I only went to two, and both of them, they didn't work. And it doesn't include New Mexico either because that tends to be controlled by Democrats. It doesn't, doesn't include California. It does include, of course, Florida. But the, the, the point is, what we say here in Texas is that now every state is a border state. Yeah. And, and that's true because the effects and the cost burden and the law enforcement burden of illegal immigration is, is affecting every single state in the union. I was talking with law enforcement the other day in a local county, said, 
our jail is full. We could arrest a lot more illegals, but our jails are completely full and we can't turn them over to border patrol because they won't do anything with them. And th this is how the federal policy is forcing the illegals to remain in play as locally functioning criminals carrying out whatever crimes they're engaged in. A lot of it is trafficking. A lot of it is fentanyl, <clears throat> human trafficking, weapons trafficking, all of it. Th this is a destabilization and demoralization operation against America, which, by the way, you know, Yuri Bezminov mentioned this, you know, decades ago, as you recall. Th this was the old Soviet plan of how to destroy America from within. And it's point by point. It's all happening right now under Biden. So Joe Biden is the president of the United States. Why did he, instead of talking to Governor Abbott, trying to come to an agreement about finding means of controlling the border. Why did he go to the Supreme Court and get that order from the Supreme, Supreme Court? Uh, is it because he wanted to smash Texas? He's a dog king. Biden's just a mm. dog king. He's not, he's a meat puppet. He's obviously not the president, right? He's mm. just there. He's a blob. I mean, uh, so, I mean, a lot, a lot of people constantly are blaming things on Biden or Obama. You know, I went to Obama's school, uh, elementary school twice in Jakarta, in Indonesia. I was there at a counterterrorism uh, school, actually. And I took a break, and I went over to the, the school. And this place is in the nicest, it's like the Hollywood of Jakarta. Look at it on Google Earth. Look at Obama's. The guy came from, uh, it's nothing but big compounds and swimming pools. You know, he acts like, you know, he was a poor black child, you know. I mean, these, these people are... They are not the ca they are not the causal agents. They are products of like Yuri Buzzum. He would have said it in black and white back in the black and white yes. days. This is clearly point by point. The information war is effective. But I would add there's also an element of economic sabotage that Biden is committing against Texas. For example, he announced that because of climate concerns, there would be uh, uh, blocking LNG exports, which mostly affects Texas. OK, now think about this. I know you guys have covered this extensively. After the United States destroyed the Nord Stream pipelines, which devastated Europeans' economy and Germany in particular, and then thinking about the nation of Qatar even halting some of the LNG exports because of what's happening with the Houthis and the Red Sea, and then on top of that, Biden, as, as a friend of Europe, then blocks more LNG license exports out of Texas. You know, look, Joe, this is my opinion, but Joe Biden and the United States under his, quote, leadership has become the most devastating pro-sabotage enemy of Europe. Hmm. Not, o not only Texas, but Western Europe as we well. We attack NATO. We, America <laughs> is, is, is like the enemy of Europe and Germany at this point. Try, it looks like, you know, the old, uh, the old strategy of keeping Russia and Germany separate. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that was Nord Stream. Right. Destroy, North, destroy the energy supply for Germany. That's why I kept Make going Europe to dependent on America. Yeah. And they it, cut off the LNG exports out of Texas. Last year, I was in Netherlands in March, you know, for the election there. And I went to Groningen, you know, the gas fields. Right. And uh, because, you know, I thought, well, they're going to probably shut this one, too. And they did. I think yes, I came on your show you saying, did. saying I just got back from Groningen. I think they're, and now they've shut that. That's the biggest gas field in Europe. I know, Europe has all the energy it needs. It just refuses to tap into it. Haber Bosch, man. This yep. is fer nitrogenous fertilizer is going to be a problem. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, don't get us going. We'll, we'll go for hours. <laughs> Which would, which would be wonderful, by the way, but we don't have ours. I mean, going to the Supreme Court seems to me an astonishing thing to do. I mean, uh, the previous civil war that the United States had, the one in the 1860s, was largely because of a decision of the Supreme Court. I mean, Dred Scott and all that. I mean, surely you would not want to involve the Supreme Court and get decisions from the Supreme Court. Um if you really wanted to find a way out of this problem in a civil and peaceful way. So I come back. Why did he go? To, why did they go to the Supreme Court? Is it because they wanted a crisis? Can't 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 read his mind to, to answer that question, Alexander. But I would say that mm. that decision by the Supreme Court has drastically reduced the perception of the authority of SCOTUS because its only job is to interpret and uh, in essence set up a framework for the enforcement of the Constitution. There is no better example than Article 4, Section 4, which specifically states that 
the, the states have to be protected against invasion. So when, when the Supreme Court violates that so blatantly, so directly, even though I know is a temporary uh, decision, that, that's not a permanent decision, but it still shows the rest of the states why they may need to be on the path of thinking about creating their own new elections, their own president, their own Supreme Court, and breaking apart. And, and again, I don't wish for that, okay? America is weaker if it's broken apart. And I think what Michael said is accurate. I think that's part of the plan, is to cause America to break up the balkanization of the United States. And we might end up living in the Republic of Texas, which would probably be an economic, you know, golden age miracle, by the way, because Texas has everything. But I don't want to see the, the nation broken up either. How solid is the feeling in Texas? I mean, how much support is there for tough action on the border? I mean, is are pre are people how how do people feel about the Supreme Court decision? How do people feel about the behavior of the of the administration about the border? Well, I mean, nineteen out of twenty people don't know the Supreme Court is even in existence, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or that Mayorkas was just in impeachment hearings and is still yeah. there. I mean, people aren't trying I mean, what's going on. Most but, people yeah, but, don't but specifically, to... specifically in Texas, how do people feel about this whole situation? I mean, they must be aware of these huge migrant flows, the fact that there's all these people on the border. I mean, are they supporting yes. opposition to this? The, uh, Absolutely. Attempt, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Day-to-day -day people, uh, they, they, they're aware of the influx and they're aware of the rising crime and they want it to stop. But, you know, it's, it's, it's very few people, you know, where you are and where we are who are actually paying attention to the details of what's going on behind the scenes. And the, the, the warning signs are, are, are very alarming right now of how this could escalate. You know, Biden needs to back down from this in, invasion. I mean, Mayorkas, how could our Congress not, not impeach Mayorkas the he, other day? He won't. Our, our I government mean, is captured. Our government has been captured, exactly. But th this is the realization in Texas and across the union, is mm -hmm. that our government is at war with us. Mm -hmm. And and we, we, the American people, we are the underclass now. And same thing is kind of true, you know, where you are, Alexander. The British are the underclass now. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the precious ones that get all the benefits and all, all the accoutrements, those are the new illegals that sweep in and, and take over your cities and your educational institutions and your government. That's what's happening in America. If we split, who gets the Navy? Who gets the Air Force and, and the nuclear weapons? I mean, this is, there's a devil in the details, as they would say in Poland, right? Well, yeah. Uh, and those are pretty big devils and pretty big details. <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't want most of the woke Navy anyway. But uh, Texas, Texas has uh, its remember, own remember massive the, military force. The reason force. Texas became, well, joined the United States was the border. Right. Yeah. It couldn't defend its border. Yeah. So it's going to get interesting, guys. That's for it's sure. Getting, it's going to get very interesting. So we've had the vote today from the Senate. I mean, the Senate is happy to vote for 60 billion dollars for Ukraine. It seems at least uh, 67 to 32 uh, voted for it today. At least it's a procedural vote. There might be lots of trade offs. We don't know what Congress will do. But the administration is keen on spending $60 billion on the war in Ukraine, which is being lost, but they're not prepared to spend money protecting the border of the United States. On the contrary, they're funding the undermining of the border. And Congress doesn't seem to be doing very much either. Well, I would say that bill is going to meet a lot more resistance in the House, that's for sure. So it, 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 it may not pass or it may pass in a lesser form, but you're right. You make a really important point. Why is it that the United States government, the Congress, is willing to spend taxpayer money to defend every other country's border around the world, but not our own? That, that's a huge problem. And you're right. The Ukraine war is lost. And of course, there, there's rising discontent in America about the funding and providing of weapons to Israel for the ongoing you know, assault on civilians in Gaza, which is, has its own humanitarian and, and even genocidal concerns that have been heard by the ICJ. So why is America willing to destroy our, the, the value of our own currency, keep printing money, spending money on other countries' security, basically funding the entire Ukrainian government at this point, including all the pensions and all the salaries of all the Ukrainian government employees. But in America, we have homeless black veterans on the streets while the illegals get $1,000 a month in, in free credits in New York City. 
I mean, it's, it's infuriating, frankly, to be here I and mean, watch this happening. I mean, $60 billion could presumably secure the border. <laughs> Absolutely. Actually, the best way to secure the border is to stop funding everybody who's invading it, well, like uh, absolutely. the United Nations, True. right? Because yeah. we are the ones invading our country, right? We're the ones doing it. I mean, the, the border wall estimates were around $20 billion just for a, a, a large completed wall. Yeah, with, but, but you make a point, Michael. Stop the incentives and... A lot of people are feeding coming. the ducks. We're throwing yes. corn on the ground. You know, I want some of that wall between up in Belfast between the Protestants and Catholics. That's some wall. That's better than the Trump wall. You've been to that wall? That's unbelievable. I mean, there's still not seen that wall. No, uh, you, 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 <laughs> I, have. I went to that wall about a year ago when I was yeah. I, I, I knew this was going to kick Is off in something? Ireland. So I went over there and anyway, wow. It, 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 th this is global. It's even happening in Japan, right? Uh, a lot of Americans don't believe that Japanese would let people in, but I assure you they are. And, uh, and I, you know, I work with Japanese seven days a week, and, and, and it, it is coming. Wow. Gentlemen, you've, you've been very, very patient in answering my questions, and I really thank you. I'm now going to hand over to Alex, because I think we might have some questions from the viewers. Uh, if Would you be able to? Of course. We're of here as long as you need us. Thank you. All right, let's go to a couple of questions from the viewers, comments and questions. Christos says, I pray for Americans to wake up and peacefully take back their country. Elena Diaz says, immigrants doing to USA what Israel is doing to Palestine. I thought the USA is for those policies. Interesting comment there. Mama Alaska says, Alaskan communities are taken over by cartels. Well, there there are cartels taking over many many communities in even in Texas in southern Texas. I mean, the the cartel influence is very very strong. Can I just ask? Actually, can I ask a further question? Because sure. I mean, and one of the things that we've been hearing a lot about in in about El Salvador, for example, is that there's been a dramatic fall in the crime rate there. That the situation has been sorted. This is partly because a lot of those people who were carrying out the crime in El Salvador, it's not the president rounding them up and putting them in prison, but these people getting on the buses and going to the United States. Just ask. I was just down that, in El Salvador. Very well may be the case. I was That's just why down Abbott, in El Salvador. I was sending them to Denver and then yeah. <laughs> I carry out the criminal actions in Denver now. Oh, yeah. I would recommend El Salvador for a vacation now, actually. I was just down there for a couple of weeks looking at the flows and the and actually the Chinese information war. They just built a giant library there, seven floors. There's a Chinese Communist Party flag flying in downtown San Salvador in front of this giant li I was in the library all, all, the whole afternoon, actually. Mm -hmm. It's a brainwashing station. But, but that's an interesting theory, though, that, you know, a lot of these Central and South American countries are taking their worst criminal elements and just pushing. Oh, for sure. Venezuela is straight States. up. Yeah. Like when I'm down in Darien Gap, you'll see them tattoos. You've seen, you know, some of the videos I've seen. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, tat AK-47 next to the eye, that sort of thing. Uh, I mean, true gangsters. Uh, and there's those. And then there's a tremendous amount of Hezbollah, for instance, in in uh in, in venezuela specifically interestingly there's a place in lebanon there's a there's a town there where it, the main language is spanish a lot of people don't realize this there's a lot of what i call meta structures that i see around the world which is like for instance i was just out with some uh Mennonites over in Belize, you know, That's right. and so there's Mennonites everywhere. There's Amish everywhere. There's, Why don't they send us more yeah. Mennonites? We, yeah. we love the Mennonites. I'll take some more Mennonites. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, come uh, on, man. I couldn't believe the, the, the incredible quality of their ice cream. <laughs> yeah. The fantastic. Mennonites know how to get things done. Oh man. They had good beef and everything, Tell but, you what. but you see that, that these, uh, but interestingly, there's a lot of, uh, Hezbollah in Venezuela and highest the Hebrew immigrant aid society is one is uh, as a major funder of bringing in Hezbollah into the you can't make up this stuff right and and and, and they're very clear about it Ir Iranians can fly to Venezuela today and they are and getting brand new passports and they come through the Darien Gap right uh and and also of course the very close relationship with uh Russia and China of course and th there's a, a war probably will kick off soon with Guyana by the way well and can can I raise a I want, I, want, I want to be respectful of your time, so let us know. I know it's probably late night there, but the, one of the concerns in America is that a lot of these people that are coming from, let's say, Iran or maybe Hezbollah coming in who are 
utterly incensed about America's support for Israel's actions in Gaza, that some of those people, and I'm, and I'm not trying to disparage all you know, people of, of Lebanese descent or Iranian descent. I mean, most people are peaceful everywhere around the world, but there may be a few people that it's a tipping point for them and that they could activate in the United States and begin to want to carry out you know, horrendous acts maybe of sabotage or, or mass killings as revenge against what America is doing with Israel against the people of Palestine. I mean, that's, that's not out of the bounds of what could happen. That, that's a very real concern. Well, it's happened in Europe. I mean, it's happened Absolutely. in Britain. Yeah. Um, shall we go back to Alex? Yeah. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Let's get some more questions. Pierce okay. Taylor, thank you for that uh, super mm. chat. Um, Mama Alaska says, Senator Durbin and Duckworth bill for illegal aliens serve in the military and police is extremely concerning because they aren't constrained by the U.S. Constitution and could be turned upon U.S. citizens. Is my concern valid? Yes. Yes. And also, they, those illegals that are being recruited into the military, which is happening right now, and they're being offered citizenship as a reward after a certain number of years of service, they don't have anything at stake in America. They're, they would be more willing to turn against the American people because it's not their families, it's not their communities. They didn't grow up here, so th that is a very, um, a very treacherous development. I believe clear and obvious future death squads. I mean, yeah. in the paradigm that I, I, I always work on developing a paradigm that's predictive and leaves me not surprised. That's why I spent so much time. We were talking about Nord Stream before it bubbled, <laughs> talking about Groningen before it got shut, and talking about death squads before they're unleashed it's coming i mean again war is my business and business unfortunately is good and and this is clear what's happening here has happened in many other countries through space and time and it's unfolding again all right from cia torture camp is if there would be a civil war who are the opposing factions and which one would control the nsa domestic spying machine well, that the NSA would be controlled by the the, the Biden regime, the, you know, the Bidens, the Obamas. Yeah, clearly, uh, the it would be Texas and the other states. If this were to happen, I hope it doesn't. But it would be Texas and the other states declaring their independence, probably borrowing language from the Declaration of Independence. Actually, long train of abuses and so on, and then they they would have to form their own new government and assert that government against a federal government that would no doubt unleash the military to try to prevent that from happening. Again, let's pray that doesn't happen, but that's where things are headed. It's clear, by the way, not a single one of our flag officers, generals and admirals uh, who are currently in uniform, have stood up on the border, not a single one. Right. They're all in on the invasion. Lady Morale says, we Texans very much are aware of what's going on. This is horrible what's happening with the border. Christos says, they want us to accept police Robo dogs to fight crime. Police and FBI agents have kids that will grow up and someday go to a protest, then get shot by a robo dog. How sad and ironic at the same time. Well, it's it's only a matter of time. I mean, I'm I'm actually working on an AI large language model project right now. I'm doing a lot of uh, tech study in the in the realm of AI. It's very clear to me that as soon as they have more capable AI behavioral models, which are called large behavioral models they will install those into the first robotic dogs and then humanoid robotic systems. And uh, those will be first purchased uh, for military use and also security use uh, because they'll be quite expensive at first, but you will have humanoid robots all over society within 10 years. And then of course, like Amazon will use them to replace the workers in the fulfillment centers. Mm -hmm. They'll be replacing workers in hospital and healthcare settings, but security will be one of their uh, key functions. And what concerns me is that they will be given the power to carry and deploy weapons and to make decisions about whom to use them against. So yeah, the the, the Terminator apocalypse is actually going to happen. Hmm. So Lila, thank you for that super sticker. Patty Patsy, thank you for that super chat. Sushin, thank you for that super chat. John Roberts says, I was born in Chicago and I live in Oregon. My father's great grandfather was in US Grant's army in the Civil War. If Texas secedes, I would fully support Texas. Biden border policy is anti-American. If Texas secedes, there'd be a lot of Americans that move to Texas. Mm -hmm. And uh, if Texas were to survive the secession, it would be an economically abundant 
new nation. Again, I'm, I'm not hoping for this, just to be clear. I, I don't want to see the United States broken apart. I'd rather see Trump get in and keep it together and enforce the border and let's remain America. But if that doesn't happen, you definitely want to be in Texas because, I mean, Texas has everything. It's got tech, food, it's got ports, it's got energy, it, it's got guns. I mean, what's not to like? I mean, maybe a gold-backed currency on top of that. You know, Texas is going to be the place to be. That's also why I moved to Texas, not for safety. <laughs> this is clearly a future battleground, like Kinetic. It's yes. obvious. Uh, you uh, want to yeah. be right there on the front lines of it, huh? I mean, I don't... <laughs> I'd be in Alaska. You are a war correspondent. I'd be, yeah. I'd be down in the jungles of uh, Guyana or someplace if I, if I wanted to avoid all this. R Ralph says, Mike, Texas, we are all immigrants in the United States except the Native Americans. Yeah, well, we're not we're not anti-immigrant. We've been very clear about that. We Absolutely. welcome immigrants who want to contribute to America and want to come in legally. And like I said, I'm married to an immigrant, and my ancestors are Native American, by the way. So you don't have to lecture me on that, whoever that commenter is. We get uh, it. And one more final uh, super chat comment from Brulaham. Mike Mike Jan seems like a good chat if you have a, a night at the bar. Half a bottom. <laughs> need to know uh, back and forth conversation with people hosting you. A good mm -hmm. chat. <laughs> at a, a bar. night at the bar to people, people want to hang out with you michael that's unfortunately what i don't drink people hosting you. <laughs> you don't uh, you don't drink uh, either. all right <laughs> unfortunately uh, I, I don't I, drink. I, all i do is study war <laughs> yeah I, I i think i think it's a lot more interesting than just having a chat at a bar actually i i would uh, like to have you around and talk about many things uh mike because i'm sure you can tell me lots of things about what's what have been going on in the world there's one last question i would like to put actually because We've talked about a crisis in the United States, and somebody just mentioned um, the fact that their ancestor served in Ulysses Grant's army. What I know of the US military, which isn't particularly extensive, but it has struck me that a lot of people who serve in the military in the United States today, I'm talking about the rank and file, are people who come from the South. Southerners seem to be very, very heavily represented That's in true. the U.S. military. So, um, I mean, would there be a conflict of loyalties if we were to start to get the kind of crisis that you were speaking of? Well, absolutely. I mean, th this is like we just mentioned. Especially the, the, Scott Irish type, which is exact culture, actually. But there's been an effort to try to purge the Americans out of the military. Right. You know, or the American spirit out of the military. Yeah. But even we saw Border Patrol uh, employees would not, you know, remove the wire. I mean, there's going to be a lot of people saying no. Yeah. I mean, is it, well, yeah. isn't there at least a possibility that the United States government might find, if it starts to take enforcement action, that it, the spear that it uses breaks in its hand? in the sense that already we're hearing the people in Texas, you've talked about the people who are, you know, on the border, who actually, whose job it is to control the border. They are not happy about implementing these policies. Well, this is what comes down to information warfare, like Michael said, that's the, the highest form of warfare. And mm -hmm. part of information warfare is always playing the victim. And you've seen this with what NATO has done with Ukraine is how they've always played the victim and it's Russia's war of aggression. So th they're going to use the same framework to try to blame Texas and blame Trump supporters and blame gun owners. I don't know how that's going to look. Maybe some false flag operation or something staged, who knows. But information warfare is what's going to drive this. And you know that the Biden administration will always claim to be the victim. Even, even somehow, <coughs> they, they're the victims of the Palestinians. You know what I mean? Like somehow they, they put that framework out there and <laughs> while they're continuing to drop 2000 pound bombs on hospitals, it's like, but we're the victims. You know, it, it's it's insane. Mm. Well, I, I, I finished, Alex. Anyone anymore? Uh, let's um, one sec. I think I got one more stand up against tyranny now when if not now and from Califortune, do they work at all with Chuck Holton, who has been doing independent reporting on the border? including the Darien Gap. Duran, please consider having Chuck as a guest. Do you know Chuck? Also covers Israel and Palestine. I just was talking with him yeah, two or three hours ago. Well, I mean, I've, I've, been, I've been to probably 20 countries with Chuck, including many times in Darien. He was just up here in Dripping Springs uh, last week in Texas.
We were together, right. actually. Well, we got to get Chuck in the studio then. I can introduce you as soon as we get offline. All right, let's do that. All right, <laughs> All right. so we'll, we'll get Chuck on the show. He's back in yeah. Panama right now. Okay. There we go. Yeah. And, and we'll try to get Chuck on the Durant as well. What is the impact of Canada's immigration on illegal immigration in the U.S.? There's 1.5 million legal immigrants to Canada yearly, 40 million population, highest in the world. I, 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 RC. Well, we're not, I mean, I'm not worried about Canadians. We love the Canadians. It, it's the, it's other nations immigrants moving through canada that mm. that are our concern right but yeah we're we get along great with canadians and the canadians yeah. and the, 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 I, I, I would like to invade canada to take their maple syrup they have maple syrup reserves <laughs> which are very valuable <laughs> and i like that stuff yeah well you All know right. they have an actual maple syrup reserve i know i know it's pretty there's epic. a lot of great stuff but the canadians <laughs> love texas too by the way fishing lake they yeah. love our attitude here because they secretly wish they could they could be more Texan. Yeah, but they, they can't because of Justin Castro Trudeau, you know? That's right. <laughs> Canada is America's hat. Uh, Christoph says, don't want to see history to repeat. Stop now. All right, gentlemen, we are <laughs> on the hour, Mark. Thank you, Mike, gentlemen. Thank Mike you very Adams much. And Mike thank Young. you very, very much, thank gentlemen. That has thank been you very much, guys. Uh, uh, Mike and Michael's information in the description box down below. I will also add that information as a pinned comment as well when the video concludes. Alexander, Mike, Michael, to all our moderators and to everyone that was watching us on this live stream, thank you very much, gentlemen. Take care. All right. such thank a, you both. Such a great honor after Wonderful watching time. your show so much. Love great. your shows. Keep great, up the great, great to work. have you guys. Great thank to you. have you guys on. Thank you. Take all care. Right, take care. Bye-bye.